Today, uh, if you look at the title of the message, uh, a lot of times uh, I think the message itself is very offensive, but the title itself is very offensive. And this is the question Jesus asked. Can I just uh, ask you to think about this? God and or Jesus in the scripture asks questions, and why does he do that? Is he omniscient? And the answer is, of course. Okay, God is omniscient, and Jesus know, he know, he knows all men, and he is, he knows what is in, in a man. He doesn't need to ask questions, but he asks a question, and one of them is, does this offend you? What is this? Okay, from the text, it's the word of Christ. In other words, the question is. The question Jesus and or God is asking you, and I want you to answer it, okay? Would you answer it to yourself? Does the word of Christ offend you? Offend you. And that's the title of the sermon, okay? Um, John chapter 6 is a, a, a mega chapter of the Bible. It's made up of 71 verses. You don't see that many chapters in the Bible with 71 verses, and praise God. Can you imagine? You'll never finish it right? 71 verses. And what is so significant about John chapter 6 is this is like the finale of Jesus's Galilean ministry, okay? He spent one year in Judea, and there were so many people following him, miracles and spectaculars and prophet and his teaching like none other so many people following him, but at the end, eventually, people wanted to kill him, right? So he went up to uh, Galilee, where he grew up, Lazarus, and uh, northern region of Palestine. And uh, he did ministry for a year, perhaps a year and a half. So if you think with me, he only uh, ministered three years. Now he's done with two years and a half. Okay, in other words, he's coming down to his final uh, outcome of his ministry, if you will. Rest of the John's Gospel, chapter 7 to 21, is mainly about one last week of Jesus' life. Okay? I'm just giving you this background because this will help you kind of orient yourself uh, where we are. So, John chapter 6 is end of Galilean ministry, and this is after... Miracle after miracles. People, miracles uh, a witness that Jesus is divine, right? Remember we talked about that in chapter 5. One of the three witnesses of Jesus' divinity is his work, his, uh, his, his miracles. Healing the lame and blind. Miracle after miracles. Healing after healings. Spectacular after spectaculars. Uh, if you recall, he turned water into wine, 60 gallons of, I mean, uh, six jar full of huge gallons of finest wine. Creation, turning water into wine. And healing this of official son who was in miles away. And he healed. Your son will be well. And he was healed exactly at the time. Do you recall that? And he healed someone who's been sick for 38 years. Someone so deteriorated, paralytic, right? Lame person after 38 years. John chapter 6 carries the biggest miracle of, of the Bible, which is uh, feeding of 5,000 men, uh, which is about 20,000 people. Now, listen, for those of you listening to this miracle for the first time, this miracle has 20,000 witnesses. If you lie something like that, do you think his ministry will take off? Right? Think logically. You think there are 20,000 uh, witnesses. In other words, there are 20,000 people actually ate the food that never existed, created, and people who do not believe, uh, do you think that'll take off? It helps to believe in the historicity of Jesus' miracle. So, feeding of 5,000, and there are a massive amount of people following seeking like right now okay and followed by this spectacular miracle of jesus 
walking on water in the storm. And he identified himself, it is I, Ego Eimi. I am the Jehovah Yahweh, transcendent holy God. Against all the law of gravity, all the law of nature, and I walk and do not be afraid. And then what follows, uh, follows after that is his own preaching. Okay. We asked around and uh, uh, in our Bible studies, who's the most famous person that you listen to in person in preaching? And a lot of people say, uh, Pastor Paul? No, 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 no. <laughs> Tim Keller? Okay, great. He's famous. He's really, really famous. But he happens to be local. But, you know, can you imagine? You hear Jesus' preaching in person. His own breath. His own rhetorics. His own passion. His own heart. With the miracles. And you would think, wow. You know, the famous sermon of I am the bread of life, which we talked about last week. What should be the outcome of Jesus' Galilean ministry? A massive revival, right? All over the world. No, that's not exactly what happened. That's not exactly what happened. And today's text carries people's response and the outcome of Jesus' uh, Galilean ministry. Okay? So that is an introduction. I want to start with this word. And I, this week as I was meditating about this message... This word, uh, this uh, scripture verse really came afresh to me. Faith comes from hearing. Mm -hmm. We know that. Saving faith, that is. Saving faith. Following Jesus' faith. Okay? Comes from hearing. And it is hearing through the word of Christ. Of Christ. It's not just anything. It's not just any sermon. It's the word of of Christ. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, and then you will have life eternal. And that bread is my flesh. Right? Oh, that's so gross. That is so twisted. That is so not real. But that's the word of Christ. And unless you hear that, there is no faith in you, okay? So, what happened, okay? Jesus is done with miracles. Jesus is done with preaching and sermon. And some of you will, after this worship service, you hear this sermon, some of you will respond differently. Some of you will walk away. Oh, I'm glad that it's done. Okay, let me go on with my life. And perhaps you will never come back. Okay. Perhaps, I pray, some of you will say, man, I'm going to follow him. No more fooling around. That's what I pray for. So he finished his preaching. Okay. This is sermon of I'm the bread of life. And I'm just going to read uh, this last section, verse 56. Whoever feeds of my flesh and drink of my blood abides in me. And I in him. Remember we talked about this Trinitarian language. If you believe in him, if you abide in him, you'll be one with Trinity. Union with Christ and union with the tri triune God. As the living Father sent me and I, I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, Jesus, he will live because of me eternally. Okay? And this is the bread that came down from heaven incarnate Christmas. That's what Christmas is, right? He came down from heaven, not like the bread of the fathers ate, not like the man of the Old Testament, and they died, and they died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He finishes his preaching, and people responded. How did people respond? Verse 60, when many of his disciples heard it. What's it? The preaching of Christ, the word of Christ. Do you hear it? Okay. As you are listening. Many of his disciples heard it. And they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to this? That's the response. Imagine you listen to Tim Keller preaching, Louis Palau preaching. Remember, imagine you uh, hear preaching of Billy Graham. 
I had a chance to listen to him twice in person. But you know what really who impressed me? This, uh, this, it was this year when we went to GC, G3 conference. I had a chance to listen to uh, Dr. John Piper. I don't remember the content, but I remember the intensity. Oh, my God. I don't remember the content. It was Philippian something, I think, wasn't it? But I remember the intensity, how he honors the word of God. And I almost sense his time, he, he knows his time is near. He's in now almost 70s plus. He doesn't have many years, so he pours his life as he preaches, and that blessed me. Can you imagine Jesus preaching, and you respond, oh, this is hard, I'm, I'm, I'm going home. Forget this. Can you imagine that? This is a hard saying. Who could listen to this? But Jesus knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling. Third time the word grumbling is mentioned. What's grumbling? Murmuring, complaining, blickering. And you get together with these people do not believe and you complain. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. And it's here now. Every church in the world. Right? These people who do not believe, they grumble about this. About what? Word of Christ. Do you see it? So they grumble about Christ and said to, and Jesus said to them, do you take offense uh, at this? What's this? The word of Christ. And Ivy renders, do you get offended? What offends you? The word of Christ. Hmm. That's the key word today. Does the word of God offend you? Okay. I'm going to just read first and then start explaining. Then what if you were to see Son of Man ascending to where he was before? Meaning Jesus will die and resurrect it and he will ascend. But if you leave now, you will, never, you will never even see that. You can't believe Jesus came down from heaven. You can't believe Jesus is going to die for you. His flesh is the, is, is, is the bread of life. He's going to be raised. And he will ascend, and you're going to see that. What if you see that? People who are not believing, right? So, <clears throat> 63. It is the spirit who gives life, and flesh is no help at all. And the word that I have spoken, which is the word of Christ, to you is the spirit and life. Do you hear? It is the word of Christ that gives you life. It's the Spirit that gives life through the Word of God. Otherwise, have, you have no, no life. Okay? That's what Jesus is saying. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And I think about this. I wonder what the dynamic is. He knew who's, who's going to believe, who's not going to believe. Not believe. He knew from the beginning. How do you think he did the ministry? Oh, they're not going to believe anyway. Forget them. No emotion, no passion, no compassion. Like that? I don't think so. I don't think so, people. He's going to betray me. He knew. He knew Judas. The ultimate prototype of someone who's going to actually walk away from Jesus is Judas. Judas. Today we see many more. And he knew. You think, oh, he's going to betray me. He's, a, he's my enemy and he's a oh, terrible guy. So let me not speak to them. Let me not explain to them. Let me not wash his feet. Is that how Jesus did ministry? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Jesus poured. I believe he poured his life onto, onto Judas until the last moment as he's doing to you. Okay? So... <clears throat> Verse 65, and he said, this is why I told you, no one can come to Jesus, to me. Absolute statement. That's Christianity, people. No one can come to me. That's an absolute statement. Absolute statement. No one can come to me. Absolute propositional statement. But there is one, but there's hope. Unless... The Father who sent me draws you and grants you to me. Do you hear it? That's the dynamic of salvation in God's realm. 
You're not going to come to him. You know why? Because the word of God, you will be offended and you will hate. That's why you walk away. Okay? So what happened? The key verse of this whole finale of Jesus' Galilean ministry. Could you look at verse 66? After this, after what? People were offended with the word of God. Many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. I'm going to pause because that's an important verse. Did you know this verse existed in the Bible? Okay. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. People have trouble with that word disciples. You mean to say disciples lost their faith? I don't think you need to look at theologically like that at all. Disciples, I think here it used loosely that people who are following Jesus, going to church, sort of, up to high school, up to college, up to, I don't know, wedding. Many of them followed, but eventually they, after this, they turned back, turned back, right, and then walked away and no longer walked with him. So if they are disciples, what are they? True disciples? That doesn't sound like true disciples, does it? Then what are they? People like Jim Boyce and uh, John MacArthur and all these great giants, they call this false discipleship, apostasy. Okay, is that biblical? Absolutely biblical, people. I hear praise from heaven. Yeah. <laughs> false discipleship. What do you talk about this on Christmas service? I didn't mean to. I did not mean to. I would just come to this point, and this is the outcome or the finale of Jesus' ministry. After hearing Jesus' miracle and Jesus' preaching people, do you think preaching will change your heart? It takes more than that. It takes powerful, sovereign grace of God to pull your heart to him. And the key word that you do not listen to the word of God is you get offended. Okay, you get offended. I'm going to just change the scene. Can I just ask, uh, ask you, what offend, how can I offend you? Okay. I asked this question in the Bible study. Do you get offended easily? And then the person is already offended. <laughs> what do you mean? You know, do you get offended easily? <laughs> She's already offended. <laughs> what offends you? Okay. What offends you? This is a very important thing. Think with me. You get offended when you, as a person, when your integrity and your character and your person is violated and, and just spoken against. Isn't that the case? Let me give you another example. If I talk bad mouth about your own mother, would you get offended? Absolutely. Why do you get offended? Because you love. The word of uh, be get offended means you get anger, provoked anger. Okay, the word uh, skandileleon, scandalous. Okay, the, uh, the Greek word. And the word offended means give offense, anger, shock, or cause offense or reversion resulting in opposition, disapproval, and hostility. Do you get offended to the word of God? And we get offended for someone who is shaking my person, my character, my integrity. You're a bad person. Your mom is a bad person. And it provokes you to anger. You get offended. Can I ask you? Word of God offends you. Why? Because it's shaking you as a person. It's shaking what you love and treasure and what you build your life upon. That's why you get offended. Jesus came as a light of the world, right? What does the light do? Light reveals. It reveals. It reveals things in your heart, right? So what reveals in your heart? 
what you love and what you treasure, what you build your life upon. Do you mean to say, I cannot be saved with all these years of going to church? And you get very offended. Do you mean to say, I did all of these. I gave everything. I did all of these. And do you mean to say, my Christianity stings? You get very, very offended. Do you mean to say, I need to yield my lordship, my control over my life? You get offended. When Bible says, no one can come to me because you, are, you love the darkness more than the light, you get offended. When Bible says, we are, our deeds are uh, evil and wicked, and you get offended. When Bible says, you are a sinner, you get offended. You know why? Because you're so right about yourself. That's what you're standing upon, my righteousness. But what I love, what I treasure, my idols, what you worship. Bible exposes your idols. Scripture, word of Christ, exposes your idols. That's why. So what do you do? You get anger. Do you know anybody who gets very upset listening to the Word of God? Do you know anybody who, uh, who gets very upset listening to the message of sin and repentance? Do you know anybody who gets really, really upset about there is no other way but Jesus? That's why people get offended. Okay, and listen to this, okay? This is a hard saying after listening to the word of Christ. They are saying it's a hard saying. The word hard is sclerosis. Sclero sclerosis. Sounds like what word? Arthrosclerosis. Stiffening, hardening of your arteries. Right? It just gets stiff and causes you to repel it. What does? As he points out, your idols, your sinfulness, your need. You need to come to me. You can't, no one can come to me. No one can have eternal life. No one can have true life unless you come to me. And it begins to offend you because it is hard. Meaning it is not hard to understand, but it is hard to accept and swallow. Someone told me uh, a while ago, don't, don't get offended, but you know, when... He or she came to this church uh, uh, some time ago. After two services, I, I couldn't come to this church anymore. And, and, and the person said, because it was so offensive. But I know I see that's my pride, pride, my sinfulness. Someone actually shared it to me. Okay, I don't know whether you're getting offended right now. I can't wait. Some, I've seen some people walking out of messages. <laughs> don't, please stay. People, why are you angry? Why are you offended? Can I just ask you? When the word of God, word of Christ is spoken, if you have the spirit of God, which means you are saved, you have a saving faith by grace, when the spirit of God is there, spirit of God welcomes the word of Christ. Even though it is offensive to you, it, even though it kind of reveals your sinfulness, let's say you yelled at your mom today, what the heck? wrong with you what is the matter with you you slammed things and you did terrible things to your mom and you come to church and you're listening to right now you are a garbage you're yelling at your own your mom if the spirit of god is with you that's right i am garbage i am just hopeless person i'm just i'm just i'm just rag filthy rag that's what I am. You began to see it, and you began to receive it, accept it, and convict it. That's the Spirit of God, people. Okay? So what do you do then? You began to see the great need, the absolute great need, desperate need of saving or someone to save me. Do you see it? Without the Spirit of God, you're not going to see it. You're just going to get angry. Why can't you speak about something more relevant? Why can't you speak about something to, to please me? Why can't you say something more to just 
make me happier right why you keep talking about this sin and Christ but if the Spirit of God with you you begin to see the need and you begin to accept it and instead of you turn your back to Jesus you turn to Jesus that's when you really turn to Jesus otherwise you're not gonna you're just gonna be floating around like so many people in history floating around floating around an opportunity comes they just walk away right and then what happens you turn to Jesus and you're deeply broken deeply not un you feel so unworthy to grab him deeply grateful utter speechless deeply humbled and you do not want to repeat it right and anything that would cause me to hinder to follow and to go to Jesus and you want to get rid of it we call that repentance that's what spirit spirit of God does and you just want to live for one cause to live for that Savior who loved me and gave himself for me do you see the difference one you get angry and the other this is what happens what's the key word of Christ I want to share what uh, <clears throat> MacArthur has to say the word of Christ other key to true discipleship whether you're gonna follow him or not okay true discipleship that's what Jesus said in John chapter 5 backing up he says truly truly I say to you he that hears my word and believes on him that has sent me has eternal life it's the word of Christ people do you remember this verse in Romans chapter 10 faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of Christ nobody get offended with the works of Christ Jesus loves performs miracles he feeds you he helps you go your school your children go to good school your business to prosper nobody get offended with that they want that that's exactly what they want they want that but with the word of Christ people respond differently true disciples and false disciples respond differently to the word of God word of Christ that's what the scripture is teaching okay that's what the scripture is teaching can I just give you and talk about from the Bible don't get offended okay I mean get offended if you if you need to get offended but don't get offended what are signs of false discipleship what are signs of false discipleship disciples that we see in John chapter 6 I, I, I thought of four okay listen to this this is all from the scripture number one they want to be with the crowd they want to be with the spectaculars why I thought when you're with a crowd you don't get exposed you just don't get exposed you don't have to get personal with God you're more concerned about what people are saying and thinking you don't really care about what Jesus is really saying number two what are signs of false disciples they are very much interested in having their fill right of their stomach their personal need temporal need personal blessings business school marriage children going to good school but no thank you to the words of Christ I have no interest in fact when you hear it you get offended okay signs of false disciples number three these people love to come together and grumble they loved grumble isn't that what we see in the Bible love together and grumble about the word or someone who's preaching the word right grumble love to get together you know that verse in Psalm 1 blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked in a seat in a seat of mockers you do not want to be around with these grumbling mockers okay and fourth and last they walk away and they all walk away eventually they all walk away people I know this is a hard message but I thought this was very prompt and timely because this is 
the end uh, result of Jesus' Galilean ministry. And we come to the end of 2019. There is some correlation, right? What will make you true disciples, followers of Jesus, as opposed to someone who will eventually go away, is the word of Christ. There is no other, no, there is no other thing. Word of Christ. Word of Christ. Okay. I want to share one more quote. This is uh, Jim Boyce quoting Charles Spurgeon. So it's a pretty reliable source right here. Spurgeon wrote, there is a constant winnowing, separating, right, going on in all churches, that, uh, and it this drives away the light and chaffy ones. There is a fan at work upon this floor, winnowing floor, and be not as chaff. Better far that we die than we deny the Lord. And what separates the two? Word of Christ, people. And I'm just, 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 pouring, just pouring my everything onto you right now. Okay, I mean, okay, I, I, I see Jesus is good. I, think, I see Christianity is good. I see, okay, I got to try hard. I kind of get it now. I think I know which direction I kind of need to go to. It's not good enough. No, it's not. Because I've seen so many people say that and then walk away. Seriously, people. It's the word of Christ shining upon you as a light, exposing your idols, what you love and treasure and what you're about, what you're building your life upon. So many people build their life upon marriage. That's why people walk away after marriage. Do you know anybody like that? Right? People, as we come to this juncture of this church and this ministry and your life, because we are the church. If you continue to be chaffy, right, and no thank you to the words of Christ, you will walk away. There is no question. Some of you are already thinking about, as soon as this worship service is over, I'm walking away. Okay, Lord knows, people. But can I just remind you, what happens if you don't follow Jesus? Nothing. No, it's not nothing. Everyone is following uh, something, and you're going to end up whom you follow. That's just the way it is. If you follow the world, you're going to be destroyed with the world. If you follow Jesus, you will live with Jesus forever. But how do we follow? You know, you follow what you love what you really treasure, what you really build your life upon, it does, actually. You do, okay? You follow what you treasure. You're not going to follow Jesus because you fear. Nobody will follow because of fear. Nobody will follow because of the duty. Nobody will be able to do that. You will follow when you truly, your heart truly see, see, because of the Spirit of God, because of the grace of God, I absolutely in need, I'm in absolute in need of Him. And he's the only way. Unless I eat of him, unless I drink of him, and unless he die for me, unless I become one with Christ, union with Christ, I have absolutely no hope whatsoever. Until you do that, you're not going to follow him. Ah, you're not going to follow him. Okay? So, Jesus' response, do you get offended at this? Now, can you imagine the heart of Jesus? Jesus is not asking this question because he doesn't know the answer. He already knows you're offended. Remember, he asked Jonah, why are you angry? Oh, jo not Jonah, who played violin. Yeah. Remember, uh, God asked Jonah, why are you angry? You think, it's, it's not because God does not know the answer. God is asking you to think about why you are angry. Why you get offended? Is it because your build, life is built upon your performance, your serving. Matthew chapter 7, when Jesus talks, finishing up his Sermon on the Mount, 
he talks about the day of judgment, right? Not everyone who said to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but who he hears the word and obeys them, he's the one, to the will of the Father, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then there are a lot of, I guess, these people, Lord, Lord, who say, Lord, Lord? Christians, right? Lord, Lord, did we not do this? Did we not cast out demons? Did I not heal you? so many people with this name, Lord, Lord? And Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. And then Jesus gives a final illustration, and it goes something like this, okay? Whoever hears the word of mine, meaning word of Christ, and does them, which means you believed. Unless you believe, you're not going to live, right? Whoever hears the word of Christ and does them, he's like a building his life on the foundation of rock. When rain comes, wind blows, torrent rises, you'll be able to stand. And then he repeats himself. Whoever hears the word of Christ, which you do right now, and does not do them, is like a building his life on the foundation of sand. When the rain comes, wind blows, and torrent rises, everything will crash. Absolutely crashed. What's the key thing? Word of Christ, people. Jesus is saying, do I offend you? My word offend you? And as you listen to him, what do you hear? His great love for us. Don't you hear it? For God so loved the world. That's why he came. He's speaking to you to aggravate you. He's speaking this to, so that he will just belittle you, taunt you. No. He's speaking because he loves you. To a point where he came to break his body on the cross. For you. For a wretch like Verse 62, he says, but what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to heaven as he was before? You know, people grumbled about two things, and people have trouble believing these two things. In John chapter 6, people grumbled about Jesus saying, I am the bread of, bread, uh, bread of God who came down from heaven. Incarnation, Christmas. By the way, that's what Christmas is, people. There is no other religion that could come to that kind of message. God actually came to us, right? And people could not believe it. Incarnation, this absolute gospel Christianity, they cannot believe. And they say, isn't he the son of us, Joseph? Belittling and defying and despising the person of Jesus, right? And the second time when they were grumbling and they were complaining was when Jesus said, eat of me, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And my flesh is the bread, which means the cross, atonement for you, substitutionary atonement. Jesus, God, have to die for you, and you cannot accept that, and you grumble, and you cannot receive that. You know why? Because you are Savior to yourself. And Jesus said, but if you see the ascension, which presumes resurrection, presumed death, you're still not going to believe? And they will see it. But if you leave, if you don't listen to the word of God, you're not going to hear it. And then Jesus said, it is the spirit who gives life. People, unless the spirit of God is given by grace to you, you are not going to welcome the word of Christ. You just get offended. You're, you can't wait until you leave. Okay? Spirit of God. Grace. And when you hear the word of Christ, you see the need. You see the absolute need. And you're not going to look around. Is he going? Is he going? No, you're not going to do that. You're not going to care. You see the absolute desperate need. You also see absolute unworthiness. Therefore, you're broken. Not grumbling, but broken. Broken person don't grumble. Broken person doesn't look for people to grumble with. 
people of unbelief gather around and, and grumble. Seat in a seat of mockers. You, you know who you're mocking? You're mocking God. Right? Your hatred is not someone who's preaching the word. Your hatred is toward the main person that preaching is about, who's Jesus Christ, people. And he says, the word that I've spoken to you, word of Christ is the spirit, and that's what gives you life. I hope you see this as we move into 2020. It's the spirit gives life, and word of Christ is life and the spirit. They go together. Apart from it, you're just enjoying the word, works of Christ, his benevolence of Christ, miracles of Christ. That's why people flocking around all these miracles and healings. Jesus said, that's not how you come to faith. Even with Jesus' miracle, they didn't come to faith. Okay? But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were and who did not believe and who would betray him. That is why I told you that no one can come to me, absolute statement, unless it is granted and is given. Father draws you. Do you want Father to draw you? How does he draw you? Through the word of Christ, people. Not preacher, word of Christ. Not preacher, word of Christ. Okay? And then Jesus says this question, as this uh, heart, heart-wrenching question, okay? Here's the question. After many disciples turned back and no longer walked with him, 67, Jesus asking 12 true disciples, there are people walk away or apostatizing their faith. And then there are true disciples and Jesus asking this heart-wrenching question, do you want to go as well? What kind of tone is that? He's no emotion. He has no emotion, no feeling. He already knew who was going to go away, so he doesn't matter to him. You think that's how he felt? Does that sound like that? I don't, I don't think that's how it sounds. Are you leaving as well? Sounds like a question, but God doesn't need any questions for him to know uh, what to, to figure things out. It's a statement. You're not leaving me, right? Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. You're not leaving me, right? You're not abandoning the word of Christ, the truth. What Jesus spoken has spoken is the truth, isn't it? Because he is the truth who came down from heaven. First-hand eyewitness. He is the truth. He is the gospel. He just shared the gospel. He shared the scripture and the heart of God. You're not going to go away, right? And then Peter, by the grace of God, listen to the confession of true disciples. Okay? And then Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? He's saying, there's no... Nowhere I, 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 I could go. You know why? Because you have the word of eternal life. He saw trans- transcendent holy God. He saw and he now believe. Look at his confession, verse 69. We have believed and have come to know how. God's, Jesus' grace, revelation, and the word of Christ, and that you are the Holy One of God. You are the Holy God. That title, a Holy One of God, is a favorite title of Isaiah. Okay? The Holy One of Israel. Holy, holy, holy. Remember Isaiah chapter 6? Holiness of God. Seraphim's. Seraphims, yeah. Holy, holy, holy one of Israel. And Peter is saying, Jesus, you are the holy one of Israel. You are the God of the Old Testament. You are Yahweh. You are God. 
to whom shall we go? Okay. Biblical ministry, that's biblical ministry, people. Okay, not any ministry, but biblical ministry, MacArthur saying, gospel ministry. Certainly, pastoral ministry has a sadness to it that never goes away. And frankly, it accumulates the longer you do it. And it is the heartbreaking reality that people come, people hear, people stay, and sometimes people actually profess and then they turn their backs on the Lord Jesus Christ and eternal life and plunge back to their sin and leave. And uh, I think this last section of John chapter 6 is here in the Bible, uh, not to discourage us, but to encourage us. Okay? Are you listening, people? Are you discouraged or are you encouraged? Are you offended or are you receiving it? Which category do you fall into? Lord is speaking to all of us people. Natural men hate the truth. Natural people hate Jesus. They love the darkness more rather than the light. But only by grace, Spirit welcomes that Jesus. Then you will follow him. It is through the word of Christ, people. Okay, let's pray.